Hello everybody, so I just started a new Godot project and I wanted to uh, do a tutorial on how I'm setting it up because I think that Godot can be a good way to, if you want to know, I downloaded Xcode and I was looking at it, you can see it here, and instead of learning Swift for deploying a Mac OS app, because I just want to make a simple Mac OS app for learning vocabulary. And I think that if you already know Godot, you can use Godot for more than just games and make like a vocabulary learning app type of game thing that can deploy to every platform imaginable because of the engine, you know? Uh, which am I using? Ah, yes, that camera. Okay. Yeah. So, so this app is for learning vocabulary because I'm a writer, I'm an author, and I don't have very good vocabulary. So I figured that by making this, I could get better vocabulary. So I wanted to show first, guys, what do you need for a word game? A word game, a vocabulary game, or vocabulary app? Well, words. You need a dictionary resource. So I want to show you guys. I went online and I found, I, I googled English Dictionary JSON because I like the JSON format because I understand like when I, I only know Python. So I think in dictionaries and arrays and stuff and I like how JSON kind of lies, lays everything out like that. And it, uh, so it gives you a dictionary. And this is, as you can see, it's a dictionary. I found this, I'll, I'll link, I'll link uh, to where I found all these um, on GitHub. But he has, there's, there's multiple lists here with, with a lot of words on them. So I was going to combine them all. I was just going to add all of the words. And so, yeah, so I just Googled like English Dictionary JSON and then I found this. And I like, I like this because it's simple. It just has the word, the difficulty, and then the definition. So that's pretty cool for a word game, you know, um, because if you use the Merriam-Webster's API or the Oxford Dictionary API, it gives you like, you know those really long numbered definitions? You, you, you get a lot of those. I like this data because it's clean. And so how do you actually put this in your Godot project? Well, I'll show you. So I just set up this project and it has access to all those words. All I did was I set up a singleton, which you do by, you would go new script. You go new script here. And then after you make it, this is the script. You copy the path hit here copy path and then you go projects project settings auto load and you add you add the one that you just did to that and then you can reference it anywhere in your document and i i named it word list so from anywhere in the document i can access this singleton which is just a word list and um, I know that it kind of sucks. If you don't want to have everything written out in Godot like this, you don't have to. You can instead use the Godot import JSON function. So if I didn't want to have all this written out, which I might not want to later, you could change this to instead words equals import. Um, or j yeah, there you go. JSON parse result. JSON parse result. And then you would have it parse this JSON file. But I don't mind having it all in here at first when I start making this because whoa, 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 where did everything go? Wait. Oh, I just did some shortcut to collapse the view of this array. Oh, okay. Oh, so then you can have it all written in. Yeah. I was going to say it's annoying to scroll through, but apparently I just learned live on camera. 
that you can uh, go ahead and just press that and it'll minimize this little area and it'll minimize the whole uh, element. So as we can see in this singleton, the variable words is just an array with that JSON, just copy paste it and it just goes on forever. Okay. Now I want to talk about what are the key challenges here? Well, one of the, one of the issues, is that because it's an array, Python is only going to recognize these in terms of integers, like in terms of elements. So this is element one, this is element two, this is element three, this is element four. But in order to actually look up chicanery, so if we wanted to actually look up what chicanery is, or like go over and like, okay, find the definition for the word guileless. Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys and let you know that I don't know how to do that off the top of my head because I've been writing for a month. I haven't coded since my last Godot tutorial. And if you want to know what happened since my last Godot tutorial, the board game that I'm making, I haven't worked on it since then um, because it's a ton of work and a big project and I want to get my novel out first. But I can't write all the time because sometimes my brain is on the writing side and sometimes it's on the coding side. So I like to have this project. It helps me like get better vocabulary while I work on it, you know. So it's pretty cool. But I wanted to say, you know, these are numbered elements right now. So I wanted to... In order to... You have to go in... So each element is a dictionary, okay? So element number 50, for example, is going to be somewhere on this list. Let's say this is element number 50. It's going to be a dictionary. And the word, the word element in that dictionary is going to be um, amalgamate. Which I think maybe actually we might be able to just hear word on. Test two thirty dot word. I don't know if this will work. I'll just show you guys how I did the first one. So all we do is we have the singleton down here. Where is it? We have the singleton down here and this is the word list. And once again, it has, it only contains one thing right now, a variable called words, and it's this giant dictionary, which we can minimize because that's cool. Can we still minimize? Yes. No. No, we can't minimize anymore because it wants us to put the array here and then I guess we can minimize the whole array. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it's being all weird, but, and then all we're doing to reference it in the main game. So up here, the main game script, and then also the, the word runner script. So this is going to be, this is going to be the, the, since it's a pretty simple project, you can just have one node governing everything. Normally, I separate it all out and do signals and all that. But I'm just going to have the UI, at all the UI contained in this because there's only going to be a setting page and then an in-game page. In-game, which is really in-app, you know. And... So in order to access our singleton dictionary words, I just made variable test two equals word list dot words. And now you have that array. So visualize you have an array and in that array, every element is a dictionary. And those dictionaries contain three elements, the words, the difficulty and the definition. Um, so for example, if we take if we then go to var word word on word one, let's say, and let's just say we want to pull a word equals test two, thirty, or we can do test two element number one, 
And now it's going to be that dictionary. So once again, we're pulling this dictionary. And we're getting this. So this is what we're dealing with. So we want to pull. Let's just have it list the word, the difficulty, and the definition. So all you have to do to do that is tell it to pull. You have your variable now. That's the dictionary, word one. And then print word one dot word. Print word one dot definition. And print word one dot difficulty. And it'll work. There's our game. There's our Steam. Lost Ark's coming out in two days, so that might cut into my productivity. It seems like a pretty fun game. Hey, where's Godot? And you can see that it printed... Well, it printed Disseminate, which is because... Um, it printed probably the second element, I'm going to guess. Yeah, it printed the second element because it starts at zero. So it printed disseminate 2239, and then I put the definition second. So cause to become widely known. So how about that, right? You've already got it. You've already got your words. You can already pull this up and... So, you know, all you have to do is make for the UI, you just have to post instead of printing them. Here's your variables. And then what, what the game is going to be, the game, the app, you go through this giant word list. And if you know the word, you say, I know this word already and it deletes it. But if you don't know it, you say, I don't know this word. And then it's going to add it to the learning list. So we'll make a new thing called learning list. And update that with all the, all the things that the player says they don't know. All the words that the player says they don't know. And then you'll have like, it'll be a customized list for each player. So we have to save it. That will be saved. Like the master word list will just be huge and it'll be shared amongst every player of the game, you know? Like this is what the game pulls from. But then you iterate through them and come up with your own custom list of the words that only you don't know. And then um, I already looked up how to save in Godot. It doesn't seem that hard. All you're gonna do is save, is save, save a JSON with those variables and then pull from it every time you load the game. So after the player, so after, so there's going to be two elements to this. You discover the new words to make that list. And then after you do that, you, um, you can play the games to learn the words. And so you, I kind of have this modular system here where you can add new mini games because you're going to have, um, I'm clicking on OBS. <laughs> So, you know, we're going to have multiple game modes and you can just have the game modes controlled by this main game script and then the UI bin. Like, so let's say you want to add a new game mode. Well, you'd add a new button for, you know, flashcards, um, crossword or like wordplay. A crossword would be cool. Yeah. So like we have like a, we have like a crossword icon and then a, um, a flashcard icon. And if we want to add a new one, we just add a third button and have that button signal to start the new mini game that will be stored up here. And then the mini game itself will be a node. So like this is word runner. This is the discoverer that I was talking about. So what I'm going to do next word runner is going to pull up a word. So, um, I'll probably just move this to go down in here. So var word list dot words. And then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through all of them. And it's going to give the player a yes or a no button. 
And if they hit yes, it will save it to a list. And if they hit no, like I already know this word, then it will not save it to the list. So that will be the next thing I do and I'll upload the next tutorial for that. But I just wanted to show how we are starting out with, you have the words on a massive list stored in a singleton and whatever kind of variable you want, and then you can access them in the script. Um, and that's good for labels, that's good for everything. Um, and I, I was just playing around with Canvas Modulate. It's pretty fun. I could give players a seizure by adding a little tuple that makes this go crazy. Ah, or twine. They're called twines. Sorry. Tween, twine. Tween, I think they're called in, in Godot. They're variable, like the thing that gives you like an oscillating variable over a set time period. Um, and then, so yeah, the next video that I show, this will be a little bit more, I'll, I'll, the next video I upload will be when I have this going, this little like, but I'll also show on setting up, I don't know how to do UIs in Godot, guys. So instead of making a UI tutorial, I'm just going to come back once the UI is done because I don't know how to do it. So there's no point in me making a tutorial on it. Um, I have to watch tutorials on it do it and then i'll come back once i have like just a basic ui where the player can do uh like i know how to use buttons and signals but what i mean is all the containers and the bins it gets really confusing and how you make it actually look nice so so yeah um it's gonna be cool though because like you know the word runner and then you can have like the flashcard one and then you can mark um you know, you can, you can, you can have all kinds of dictionaries for each word and like categorize like, okay, you've gotten this, you've missed this one. Like what are the, your most frequently missed words in the past week where you got the definition wrong or you couldn't do the flashcard or you couldn't do the crossword. And then it can give you like your top 10 worst words and you learned those for the week. As you notice, this is more of an app than a game. And it's, I think it's cool, guys, if you want to code in Python, like, because I'm a data analyst, so I know Python, but it's hard to make things in Python that are native to the platform. So what can you really make in Python? Like, if you want to do web with Python, you kind of got to do Django, which unless you're a full-time developer, a senior developer, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to be doing Django for a living. And if you, you know, you do data science and data analysis, that's how I make my money. And then I write the rest of the time. But I think that Godot is cool because you can make games games that aren't that are actually kind of apps like a vocabulary learning game slash app really an app an app that has games in it because Godot can manage um the rendering and it can manage saving its own files and that's all you really need is to be able to s for this i just need the save game the the save game which is going to be the saved list of words for the player and then, um, and then the renderer. So, and that's built in to Godot. So you can deploy to Mac, Android, iOS. You can deploy to everything, you know, at once. So building your app in here might be kind of cool, everybody. So, yeah, thanks.